So in this week's video, we continue with last week's topic, and that is ramp lesions of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and its capsular attachment. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch that one first, and then come back and watch this video. So last week I forgot to show you this uh, graph here, but just as a quick repetition, we have the medial meniscus, this is the posterior root, this is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, and we have the joint capsule here, and then all these structures are blending in together, forming also parts of the joint capsule, so we have the posterior oblique ligament, posterior medially, and then the deep layer of the MCL um, on the medial side. But we are now focusing on lesions here at this level, going back one structure here, so the two important structures are first of all the meniscus itself, or the posterior horn, then the posterior joint capsule with the meniscocapsular ligament and the meniscotibial ligament as illustrated last week. So one key information you should take home from this video is that ramp lesions are common, so it's not something rare and in up to one fourth, like or 25% of patients with ACL tears have ramp lesions, so we all probably have missed a few of them already. This is a patient with an obvious LCA tear, and if we scroll medially, we can appreciate we have an intact meniscotibial ligament here, and this is the recess, still normal, and the menisco uh, capsular insertion here seems okay as well. So um, at this time, we don't see a menisco capsular separation or a ramp lesion. So this is uh, just this, this recess. Now this patient it's interesting because he had then a new trauma three or four months later on and then during arthroscopy he had a obvious ramp lesion which I don't think was present here and that's actually something that can happen in patients with um, ACL tears. Once the ACL is insufficient you have a lot more stress on these meniscocapsular uh, structures here and ramp lesions are also very common in patients with chronic ACL insufficiency. So always look out for these in these patients as well. So before we move on to the cases here, illustrations from this uh, skeletal radiology article, which is really good. And I put the link to the article in the description down below. So this is just the normal anatomy. We have seen that last week. Now you can have like five different type of lesions. So basically there are two different classification systems. Um, I don't think it's clinically that useful as a radiologist because at least I have a hard time to really make this separation uh, and give it a name. So uh, anyways, you can have a tear of the meniscocapsular ligament as shown here, although the, the image here, they are not really convincing. The red arrow shows twice at a different location, not sure about that, but it was a ramp lesion on, on the arthroscopy. Then here, if you have with a meniscus fragment or a meniscus avulsion here, uh, the tear is also reaching into the articular surface here of the meniscus superiorly. Then this is the, another type, type 2. Then uh, type 3 lesions, they basically have two different subtypes, 3A and 3B. So that one here with an avulsion of a little bit of meniscus here would be a type 3A. And this one here is then a type 3b and these are known as also hidden lesions because you don't see them from above they are just hidden here behind in that triangle then uh, type 4 again two lesions just like a complete avulsion of both ligaments with a meniscus substance we will see an example of that and a type b if it's just the ligaments avulsed without attached meniscus and Type 5 is then if you have like some, some double double tear basically, double vertical peripheral tear, um, which is also with ligament walls and again meniscus. But I don't think um, it's really important to make this distinction. Some make a dis differentiation between stable and unstable lesions. But uh, I think I'm happy enough if I get to see a lesion and can report it as a ramp lesion. And the surgical reports I've seen, also they don't use this classification. But just for you, go read the article and uh, get familiar with the potential sites of lesions. I think that's the important thing. Here in a patient with a lot of joint diffusion, again with an ACL avulsion. And this is the PCL insertion. This time it's fat saturated. We scroll medially. We have the posterior root of the middle meniscus, posterior horn. And you can nicely see the anatomy. This 
in this patient. So the menisco capsular ligament, so we go immediately again, so joint capsule menisco capsular ligament is inserting onto the base here of the meniscus here. We have this recess which is still considered to be normal. And we also have the menisco tibial ligament here, although in this patient it's not as black as it could be probably uh, affected in uh, this trauma setting and then it's going away whereas we have still attachment of the uh, meniscal uh, or the joint capsule here onto the base which is extending far more medially than the meniscotibial ligament just to to keep that in mind here really nice anatomic uh, illustration so here patient with acl tear uh, obvious uh, it's an older injury already so we need to be very suspicious for a ramp lesion and this is now the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. This is the PCL insertion. So we would expect a meniscotibial ligament here. What we can see is a fragment here. We don't see a real ligament connecting the base here with this uh, bone here. So it's torn or chronically torn, probably with an osseous avulsion here. So we already have this kind of lesion here. Whereas the menisco capsular ligament coming down here might still be intact. So this is one, one type of a lesion just down here. So this is the next case. You can see we have an ACL tear, um, so we should already have a high grade of suspicion. And if we scroll medially here, posterior horn of the middle meniscus, we don't see a menisco tibial ligament. And we see this black stuff here, which looks like a part of the meniscus, so like this upper corner that should attach down here and the menisco capsular ligament is attaching here onto this evolved menisco fragment. So we have a complete menisco capsular separation at this level. So the meniscus here in the red zone is not attached to the capsule anymore. So this is an important finding. So here another example, ACL is torn. This is the PCL insertion. We scroll medially, posterior root, posterior horn. And we can see we have a large meniscal fragment here in the red red zone. Uh, even in the, at the junction to the red-white zone. So we have this longitudinal vertical tear here extending far medially. And you can see how the meniscal capsular ligament, so coming down the joint capsule here, is attaching at this evolved base here. And probably we have some portion of the meniscal tibial ligament here which is also attaching here, so complete separation. So here another young patient, ACL is torn, PCL insertion, we have the posterior horn and we can see some meniscus substance here which should be actually here at the base. We have portions of the meniscotibial ligament inserting here on this meniscus fragment, similar to the other case that we have seen already. This is the menisco capsule ligament, it's not as black as it could be, and there's some menisco substance also here. So again, this is a ramp lesion with a menisco capsular separation reaching far medially. And that's another point, you should always have a look on your axials as well. So this is the additional injury, so ACL and MCL also affected. And this is the meniscus, and if you scroll here, you can see that some substance of the meniscus is torn here away. and it's nice to give the surgeon a uh, extension or a length here. Typically, the, this tears. So this junction um, is up to two centimeter in length. Some paper have two point five centimeters, but it seems to be just up to two centimeters. So give the extension, and the longer the tear, the still, uh, the more relevant this injury could potentially be. And this patient here. We go to the ACL, it's torn, no surprise there. We have the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. And you can see as we have this fragment here of the posterior horn of the middle meniscus here with a uh, meniscal tibial ligament that probably t pulled this one out here. And we have here also a injury of the meniscal capsular ligament here most likely. So if it's just affected down here, then it's sometimes also referred to as a hidden lesion. As you can see, uh, these different type of lesions are really hard to differentiate on MRI because the structures are so tiny and it's never really easy to even appreciate the normal anatomy. So I think if you have an ACL tear, be very suspicious and really look for these kind of ramp lesions and 
give at least a suspicion in your report because during the arthroscopy using just the normal standard portals it can be hard for the surgeon to to see the posterior medial or the posterior joint capsule insertion onto the posterior horn of the middle meniscus and sometimes they have to do an extra portal or they have to use a specific technique to look for this kind of lesion so it's also a radiologist's job a little bit to give uh, uh, this direction to the surgeons that's it uh, thanks for watching leave comments if you have any questions and i will answer all of your comments there and thanks for watching and see you next week